training and international project manager at ABG France. Her uh, expertise is in uh, training in French and English languages on topics of professional development and development of intercultural competence, mobility and international cooperation, active and participatory uh, pedagogy. So, uh, Christina will be your trainer today. Thank you very much, Christina, for joining, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Svetlana, for this lovely introduction. I hope the, that my son, son uh, is still, sound is still fine. Um, so, welcome to all of you um, to this session on building your pitch and especially how to effectively introduce, present yourself and your career path uh, when networking with a focus on the non-academic sector. Um, so since there's, um, oh, there will be a quick introduction, I will just launch also um, another uh, platform called Klaxoon. So let's go to the Klaxoon. In just in a second, I will share with you QR code or the link to go there. Just a second, I need to open the, um, the platform, and then I will, of course, introduce them myself more into details while I'm uh, just sharing with you this um, pitching strategy. And then, of course, um, also we will discuss um, what ABG is about. So, um, Normally, you can see my Klaxon slide. There's, I will just put the link to go to the Klaxon. Maybe some of you already know this platform. So like a participation platform. And there's also a QR code if you need to, uh, to go there. So the idea is that you apply either on the uh, link I just said in the send in the chat box, or um, you scan the QR code you see on the screen. Um, let me know if you see the QR code, and then uh, the activities will start. So let me know if the link is functioning or QR code? Yes. Yes. QR code also works. Okay, then I will start the first activity. So like you need to create a sticker with your first name and where you're from, maybe your seniority level, whether you are just a PhD candidate, postdoc, or already a researcher, a senior researcher, professor. And then, so to create a sticker, you click on this plus button here. So you put your name, where you're from, the, um, the career level, the career seniority, and then, so I'll give an example. So here is already mine. You put your sticker in the country where you're right now. So I see new, I see new, okay, some. So you created stickers, then you can of course display your stickers um, according to the country you're currently in. And one where, well, I hope all of you on click soon. So um, just to let, to give time to everyone to um, put your sticker on the map. I will also um, give, um, to talk about the ABG. So um, the ABG, 
by, or Association Bernard Grégory, by a French nonprofit association dedicated to career development for PhDs outside of academia. But of course, well, we're a French association, but we're working internationally. And from the very beginning of our creation, our mission was to facilitate the transition of PhDs, whatever the field and seniority from academia to the private sector, and we're also working with companies, helping them to recruit PhDs. Um, what we do on a daily basis, well, we have job board for our recruitment activities. We have website with different information um, that could interest you. We have newsletters, international one as well, uh, some information, networking events, um, testimonies from PhD holders um, sharing their experience, how they found also um, their job, or also recruiters. And um, for the last nine years, we also organized professional pitch contest uh, where researchers pitched um, in front of a professional jury from industry. Um, so this is pitching uh, culture is a part also of our activities. Um, and about the link, okay. Thank you, Svana, for posting the link again. So I'm going, back to Klaxoon to see your answers and also to meet you. Okay, well, there's a lot of stickers just to help myself to do not miss all of your stickers. I will use this one. So um, we have Ashraf from Iran, senior researcher, Ali, PhD candidate from Spain, Marina, Cyprus, researchers, Valentina, career counselor from Slovenia, Tanino, Italy, plus Austria, wonderful, already very international and intercultural audience, um, data scientist, Yari from Mexico, um, well, Christina, it's me, I just tested my, um, my uh, sticker, Alizera from Iran and now PhD in Belgium, Philip MD from Bulgaria, George from Cyprus, senior researcher, Ina, PhD from Ukraine, um, Christina, researcher, Slovakia, Tina from Estonia, student and linguist, Dari, Belgium, PhD, Victoria, Belgium, PhD candidate. Cyprus Senior Associate Scientist, Helena, PhD. Okay, we have also Julia, Brazilian, enough in France. He working for as a research engineer. Simus from Cyprus, researcher. Okay, one person, uh, one PhD from Ukraine. Ludovica from Italy. Also PhD from Estonia, Ricardo, I mean, wonderful. Well, you're quite uh, numerous. So uh, just once again to see how beautiful the, our map is. Miriam from Italy, Elena, Italy, psycholinguistics. So I see the very broad fields. Um, different countries, countries of origin, countries of uh, where you're currently staying, wonderful. So um, uh, we will talk also um, how um, to introduce, how to um, communicate and make the very good first impression in different um, international context. Um, I promise also um, uh, more detailed information about myself, why I'm here to um, help you with your pitches. So once again, my name is Christina, Christina Berkut. Um, I work for uh, ABG, as uh, Svetlana has introduced me. So myself, I'm Parisian, but also Siberian. And actually that um, cultural mixture led me to become um, 
uh, to become a PhD holder in intercultural management and also in communication, intercultural communication, with a prior experience in journalism and communication. So throughout my career, I've been practicing and um, communicating um, particularly in, um, in in international context um, as a presenter, as a moderator of different events, as also a participant. It's also important to know how to introduce yourself even if you're not in the center of a, um, a, an event. And each time my priorities were making sure to be audible, concise, on point and then with knowing how to how to do this uh, pitching i started to share of course my tips on pitching with uh, researchers um phd candidates and postdocs mainly sometimes also um on the event that I moderate, we have more uh, senior researchers, professors as well. And so that's why I'm very pleased to, to be here with you uh, today and of course to give, to share with you some advice on how efficiently uh, pitch uh, when networking. And of course, we will also discuss um, what is networking about, uh, is about as well. So do not hesitate to um, ask me questions either in chat box or just to um, put your mic on and ask a very natural question like a communication. So we still like uh, 64, so it's a bearable amount of people. So if you want to interact, really do not hesitate. I encourage you to do so. So uh, thank you once again for introducing quickly yourself. Let's then discuss also some rules of the workshop. Well, of course, not just questions, but even discussions are welcome. If you want to share some elements from your experience, you can do this both way, either in a chat box or just by uh, taking a parole. Um, in the second part, we will um, do some practice. So, of course, benevolence will be important, but also um, try to be constructive. It won't be enough to provide a feedback to your colleagues, just saying, like, everything is fine, uh, nothing to add, nothing to change. We're here to practice. So it will also help to build a group dynamic. Realism, um, it means that, of course, maybe you will not receive all answers today uh, in just one, after one practice, um, you might not become perfect pitchers, but it's a start. And then of course you need to invest um, and uh, practice as well. And then, well, I, I'm uh, checking on your faces uh, uh, to see also your reactions. So if um, it's fine for you to keep your camera on, please do so. And then of course, if you, um, if you talk, mic off. If not, uh, please keep your mic off. Um, do you accept these rules? Yeah, well, the faces I, suppose, I see. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, wonderful. So let's go directly to the, um, there's also some reactions, wonderful. Well, um, about pitching. And uh, well, let's start also with, career crossroads. Um, while, well, when we talk about pitching communication and of course career development, it, it doesn't matter if you're at the end of your thesis or if you're doing your first or third postdoc, if you're already um, a researcher, established researcher, um, at any point of your career, you might ask yourself, what I want to do next and in what sector. So what you already know, um, with some exceptions, I saw on the post in that some of you are already in the private sector. Well, basically, you know academics research. First, you're P a PhD candidate, then you're a postdoc, lecturer, assistant professor, 
than a professor, um, but it's not, of course, it's not the only way to make your pitch useful. At each step, actually, you may have many choices to go to private education, publishing, journalism, civil service, consulting, um, technological transfer, intellectual property, anything. R&D, of course. So once again, um, in my in today's workshop, the focus will be on the non-academic sector. So we will also discuss, um, of course, this transition from one sector to another. And to be able to get hold on these different opportunities while switching from one sector to another, it's it will be essential to prepare yourself and know how to speak about your accomplishments um, with sort of self-assurance uh, and of course make yourself noticed by important people, by decision makers. So this is what we are going to see during today's workshop to learn how to pitch your career path also as consistent. Um, but before we start, um, and also so to, to show your experience and skills, of course, you need to work on your introduction. It's something I'm sure you already know how to do, but in academia. So let's talk about industry or business companies. Sometimes I'm, um, well, I'll say industry or companies, of course, it, it's all non-academic sector. So it could be NGOs, any type of uh, uh, organism, companies. So we do not stick to the term uh, industry or business. Um, so a question for you. Uh, in what context you might need to talk to someone from industry? And um, when you need to talk to this person in some different context, what would you say, um, what are the main differences between communication in science and communication in business? Do you have some ideas already? Well, first, in what context can you talk with someone from industry? I cannot really <clears throat> answer about the context. There are several different ones in my mind. But if my instinctive difference between talking with scientists and talking in a business setting is in one case, you kind of showcase what you don't know, but you can do. And that's like the scientific approach. I can produce knowledge. I do not have it already. Uh, while in business, it seems like these are the things I've achieved. And I find that kind of talking very difficult as a scientist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So already you need to market uh, your skills, your experience. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tanino. Um, Theodor? Yeah, hello. Um, well, uh, usually the business in the industry, in, in the industry in general, they need uh, solutions at the time that they request it. So sometimes the science part or the academic part, it takes time to do the research and possibly not have a result on a specific time, but usually the industry wants to buy uh, solutions in their daily uh, issues. So mm -hmm. uh, from my experience so far, I think this is the main uh, difference in industry and science. Yeah, you're absolutely right. This the fact to mention your achievements that you're able also to obtain results will be very much important when talking to someone from industry. Hmm? What else? Maybe you have already experienced uh, some situation when you talk to someone from industry. Could you share in what setting? Was it in what context? Um, see the the chat box. Okay, so the main um, 
put the focus on the results with someone from industry, including publishing, absolutely. So it doesn't matter if we're talking about um, hard sciences or uh, social sciences, of course, the, the results, the notion of results um, applicable to both uh, types of sciences. Professional collaboration, uh, Halter, um, some of my research needs they support absolutely so. And uh, you see, of course, even if today we will discuss with the main focus on industry, on the non-academic sector, the tools and tips I will give you, of course, they are also absolutely applicable to the academic sector while uh, asking for funding or yeah, while looking for collaboration. Comment from Philip in industry, you can determine um, what you can see value or create one and discuss it. So yes, value and also the notion of shared value. And that's why we will see that in pitch, it will be also important to talk about yourself and not just purely about your skills and your research experience. Uh, Michael, practicable and implement, implementing the research. Um, in addition, if you agree upon a project to find ways to realize it, whereas in science, you discuss topics with people in the same background. So it means that, of course, you will need to adapt your vocabulary. It won't be very productive to discuss um, with the same language with people from different sector, from different, um, with different background, as if you were discussing with your colleagues uh, from the same field. About the context, so it could be job interview conferences, buy a service or provide service, of course, collaboration offer or internet, um, entrepreneurial activity, absolutely, sharing experience, yes. Well, you, uh, you give some, um, some examples, wonderful. So of course, um, it could be plenty of different contexts. Some main situations, some potential scenarios in industry when you really need to introduce yourself, they mainly include, but of course, they're just some examples. They're not limited to this, uh, the ones I will show you, but first, when you attend a forum or a job fair, so you mentioned this while uh, setting a collaboration or meeting new people. So you start a conversation with someone you don't know. If it's a career fair, well, it could be and they stand. And then with some small talk, you realize that the person is a relevant contact for you, for your career, and that um, this person, your interlocutor, even shows interest in you. So you need to be able to really um, provide a full picture of who you are as a professional. Um, then, of course, it could be um, attending, while well attending uh, some after work or networking events. It could be situation when you introduced by someone you know to, to the third person, to professional um, who will need to, to know uh, a little bit more about you uh, and about your projects. Um, or also if you're really in advanced level of networking, when, when actually you um, connect with professionals and you ask them for a networking discussion, meaning it's we're not talking about recruitment interviews, we're talking about this discussion with professionals when actually you're gathering different type of information. Your, well, your goal is to explore a different sector, different jobs. So let's say you, you're wondering what, it, what does it mean to be R&D manager or consultant or a tech transfer specialist. Of course, you got the first idea from, from your entourage, or from um, job offers, but really what it is about these kind of jobs, you want to be sure 
if you have right skills, if you have in right understanding of what is expected. So for this, you're looking for networking discussion when you can gather this information and um, receive some advice from professionals. So you walk into this person's office for this networking discussion, and the person asks you for a short introduction. Of course, you've been in touch on LinkedIn or by email, by phone, um, but once again, to settle the framework of the situation of networking, you need to provide some additional information and uh, talk about your goals. Or as um, some of you also mentioned in comments, um, when you're invited to the recruitment interview with the companies, um, let's say it's uh, it's not your future job, uh, your future boss, but it's uh, HR manager who's not specifically specialist from your field and who sits back in his or her chair and says, oh, well, tell me about yourself or why should I hire you? So in these examples, under these circumstances, first impression are vital. You only have a few minutes to awaken the interest of your interlocutor and make them want to know more about you, to engage in a dialogue, to ask you questions. Um, so that's why a crucial communication tool will be, of course, pitch to introduce oneself. Maybe you already heard about elevator pitch. Let me know if it's something that you, you know, you heard about an elevator pitch. No. 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 No, there's no. Um, well, in few words, uh, wonderful that I mentioned this on the pitch then. Um, it's a term, well, it's a back from, uh, it was created by uh, baseball terms, but of course we're not talking about baseball, we're talking about elevator pitch, when actually while attending, um, well, while waiting for elevator, uh, there was this small talk when uh, two professionals introduced to each other while they uh, go in somewhere on, uh, I don't know, Spence, uh, first floor. Uh, so of course the term came from uh, United States. So if you're right now in a country where there's not quite high buildings, um, <laughs> well, it doesn't, mean that you're not able to, to perform an elevator pitch. It's actually um, a talk and quick introduction to open a conversation. We're talking about 15 to 30 seconds. Um, the same um, when you uh, attend a career fair or globally you meet someone in the public uh, for the first time eventually in an elevator as well. So you need, of course, to give your name, your position. Is This is something that comes really naturally, quickly. Uh, well, if you're already um, in a position, what you do, some of your main activities, and why uh, you launch a conversation. And then based on this structure of an elevator pitch, in more um, in a more professional way, we're talking about two minutes presentation, and in two minutes presentation, it's correspond to the question. Tell me about yourself. So it could be networking discussion. Is this idea to introduce yourself, and also to find more about company and ask questions to your interlocutor. So, of course, networking will be important for the transition uh, to industry. Um, before we discuss what is networking is about, do you have some questions? 
then you know I see you comment that you seen this uh, in many movies yes never really happened in real life in front of an elevator like in the movies but it happened mm -hmm. wonderful question from any one of you then uh, let's also discuss um what is networking is about um just a quick step over before getting to the heart of training to fully understand the context um, of pitching. Um, once again, according to you, what does networking mean? Um, so what is networking and also who is the part of your network? And uh, why? According to you, you need to network with new connections. And also, if you already practice some networking events, uh, networking approach, uh, if you would love to share with us your, um, your networking steps, your networking approach, how do you network? Do we have some desire to share some? Thoughts about networking? Well, uh, yes, I uh, yeah, uh, I think networking uh, is very uh, important, especially uh, I'm speaking uh, about research section. Uh, here, we need to have uh, as big network as possible so that we can connect with peers uh, and we can see whether these peers can uh, uh, make um, fruitful collaboration about our work. And uh, during this networking, we have, uh, you know, uh, the possibility of polishing our ideas, getting into new research ideas, uh, building in new um, uh, uh, collaborations that can, um, uh, from which we can gain new experience. Mm -hmm. Without networking, I think a person can't can't develop in his, uh, I mean, career. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Because without networking, you're just stuck to the information you already have. While networking, while uh, meeting new people, it means that you also receive new information, new ideas, new opportunities. So I absolutely agree with you, Say. I'll also see a few comments in the chat box. Networking is a way of building your social capital, of course. Um, practicing your soft skills as well. And then there's also a question why networking is perceived as difficult by many people. Um, so I suppose that the question, Lawrence, uh, um, let, let me know if the question was mainly for me or for all uh, people. But before I answer to this question, if also some of you, uh, yeah, some of you can share whether you find it difficult and if so, yes. Um, yes, Elena? Uh, for me, uh, networking is necessary because of my profession, uh, medicine. It is necessary to find new colleagues, new contacts to discuss patients, uh, several clinical cases. And for me, uh, two best um, ways for uh, networking it is social networks like LinkedIn, professional social network, and during uh, congresses and international conferences. It's really nice way for networking. Absolutely. So LinkedIn is an international platform. So there's plenty of countries that, where we, we can find LinkedIn, with some exception for several countries. But it's true that if it was the case a few years ago to find just people from industry in LinkedIn, nowadays it's really, it's no more the question of sector. You can find any sector any type of uh, background, any type of seniority. So it's easiest way um, to stay in touch with people from your network. 
So thank you, Elena, for sharing this. And I really encourage all of you, if you're hesitating, or, or should I create a LinkedIn profile or not, do not hesitate. Do not hesitate anymore. Try and then, well, you, you will see whether it's useful or not. May I share my experience? Sorry yes, for my voice because I'm a bit sick. But um, normally I have 17 years of experience in a business. And since the beginning of this year, I started working in Sofia University in academia. So I'm the other way around from business to the academia. But I leave my LinkedIn profile absolutely empty. Nothing happened, nothing was updated, nothing. Once I started, okay, maybe it's important, I will update my information on what I'm growing, I am changing. I started to receive so many job offers. One of it was for district manager responsible for um, seven countries. Can mm -hmm. you imagine what this was really big opportunity that otherwise no one knows me, what's my experience and I've been like, I don't know what to do, which career path to take. So it is important from my point of view, sometimes the chances go just with a few steps. So yeah, this absolutely. Is just more remark. Thank you, Tanya. I would absolutely agree that LinkedIn is a nice place for inspiration just to see, I have, I have, my PhD in my field and I have no idea what can I do with this so with keywords I can find people with similar background and see what kind what type of jobs they're doing in what position they are right now and of course it's not uh to me <laughs> to say to you that uh research is international so if you want to expand also your collaborations well mm -hmm. of course you need to to be present where you can find these professionals from all over the world. Thank you. Um, I'm checking on the, the landing. So there's some comment about the, the difficulties. Uh, well, in Paris, could be dif different, difficult to network. And it's true that also networking, sometimes it could be very cultural thing. Um, and, um, but once you know rules of networking, you can apply this to any country. And especially to France, it's, well, in France, it's a very cultural thing to network, to approach professionals and to expand your network as well. So very quick tip is of course to learn in, more about um, networking, really to position yourself as professional and approach other professionals. And international tip, when your request is clear, when clearly in your first message, you explain why you want to network with this professional, with this particular professional, what your goals are, and especially if you have some key in common. So, if you know someone who knows someone, in this case, of course, it's easy to network. Then, if you're a newcomer to a country, would one thing that you also might have with a professional to network is your PhD. A PhD is really great, great key to enter in the contact because it doesn't matter what country it is. If you want, let's say, um, network with professionals now working in a company and their provisions. Uh, you don't know how to approach them, but in your first message, you mentioned that you're also a PhD holder, now wondering how you can switch to industry. So it means that the person, if this professional has also a PhD and now working in company, for sure, they've been through this question, what shall I do next? So it's something in common that will help you to also like to break the glass and to, to receive a positive answer. So when you can find something in common with people to network, really it doesn't matter 
what country it is, it will help you to approach these people. Um, I'm also continue to read your comments. Then if you want to share something uh, spontaneously, do not hesitate to talk. Um, LinkedIn, social networking, of course. Um, about personal character. Well, it's true that a few years ago, when uh, you learn more about networking and networking tools, one of the reasons I've been told why people don't know how to network is because of characters, temper, like um, extra, um, what do we call this, extroverted people uh, like have this tendency to, um, well, they, they were supposed that they have some facilities to network than introvert. And I see Laurence, your, your comment. So, it was always shocking for me. I wouldn't say that it's the, the, the problem is based on your character, on your temper. I would say if you find this difficult, it could be some um, cultural um, influences. Let's say, um, what do I mean by cultural influences? Um, you might think that, well, in my country or in my culture or in my Field, it's not something common that we do. We do not network. We do not approach professionals. It's a very uh, bad taste. And uh, like I want to um, to find a professional opportunity by myself. I don't want to um, give something in return to um, to this uh, to this professionals. Really, I don't want to owe anything. To these professionals. Well, if when you reflect and you feel that it's some cultural, you just need to check. If it's just your opinion, if there's all people um, with similar background, they are really close to networking. And I'm sure that you far will find that actually there's still people um, networking, even if it's not a common practice. Um, in your culture or in your field. And then the real reason is because, um, like, I don't know how to. I really don't know tools, how to network. And what will help you? Well, of course, the clear communication, efficient communication helps in networking. Um, and then also think about switching. Um, you know, um, think about change of perspective. So let's say if someone outside of your network will approach you and ask for advice, will you help this professional or will you ignore this person? Um, so maybe already you actually experienced this that someone has approached you and who wanted to know about the, the uh, postdoctoral program you are in right now or about your university or about fellowship you got. Tell me if you, you, if you experience this uh, from youngest researchers approaching you and asking for advice and how did you react? Um, actually, yes. For example, I've experienced this a lot in the scientific field. It's a constant asking for advice and receiving advice. And in this sense, this turns into a very easy networking opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a comment that maybe uh, for the people that say like it's difficult to, to network or to do it productively. In this kind of context, I have the impression there is the more senior person that should take care of the connection building. And with this, what I mean is if you are asking for advice and if I feel I can help you, you don't kind of want to waste my time now so we can connect, so we continue later. And I will be the one proposing the connection if I think I can help. While on the other hand, if it is me asking for help, 
I will ask if the person can help me now or later and propose and like suggest I'm ready to connect if you want, but I will not ask unless they're willing to do that because I don't want to waste their time. And so far, I've always been asked to connect, so it's actually not uh, so difficult in this sense. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Tanina, for sharing. Um, yes, Annie? Would you love to share something? I don't know if you're trying to say something, but we cannot hear you. Um, so, Anya, if you wanted to share something, let's we'll check your mic and I hope you I will hear from you soon. Um, before I uh, comment on the, you know, what you just said, I will show you the, the, the meaning of networking. Well, mainly it's, yeah. I'm sorry, it was a, a mistake with my team. That is okay. You can continue, please. Okay. Um, so networking is about making connections, meeting new people who could advise you in your career plan, with your projects and also who will lead you to meet other people whether it's virtually or physically and uh, also who can benefit from you as well and um, sometimes when we talk about networking what I also see it's this wrong idea that I help you you help me no networking is absolutely not something you do once when there's a need. Ideally, networking, it should be a lifestyle, something that you do when there's a need, professional need, or if there's zero need, you just want to uh, expand your network and chat with uh, other professionals. Doesn't matter whether they are from your field or not. It will be more easier when there's actually, when you start network without need, when you're already in your current position and like it's not tomorrow that you will need to apply for a new job. So you'll position yourself as a professional, just talking to other professionals. It will help you. And so about like connecting people when there's a need. It like, it, it's true that if you do network really punctually and if you connect with people asking for advice when you need an advice, um, they could create this atmosphere that, well, I don't want to bother people, they are too busy. Um, no, once again, if we're into this networking lifestyle, once again, don't think that professionals would be bothered by you. You ask them for advice. If they are busy right now, normally a good professional will let you know, like, I would love to help you, but um, for the next uh, one, for the next few weeks, unfortunately, I'm quite busy. Uh, could, could we chat later on? Oh. Or if the person says like, unfortunately now I am busy. So of course it's up to you to be flexible and to say, okay, when will you be more available? And once again, don't think that you bother people, like you, they, you will owe them. So once again, it's a mutual helping. Well, it's not a like two way, of connections, it's more circular, meaning Svetlana will help me tomorrow in my career. Um, the day after I will help that Tanya, um, then Tanya will help you. You will help some other researchers and one day this, some other researchers will help me and Svetlana. So you see really, there's always something you're already giving to these people when you network in with them. First, you give them the pleasure to talk about their career path because well, while you're gathering this information about them, um, 
it's always a pleasant experience to share what, like, what you've been through. This idea of helping others, of course, it's a very valuable. I helped uh, researchers in their career. So I, I'm not asking something in return. And also, if absolutely you are thinking about giving something in return, usually in networking, in networking discussion, of course, it's not uh, an equal discussion. It's not 50-50. It's, let's say, you asking questions and then your interlocutors answering. So let's say it could be between 20, 15, 20% you talking and then 80 70, um, them answering and talking about their career path. But in this 20% you have, of course, you can also share information. You can share some fresh information, what's going on in research, because you're the one who have this information. Professionals working in industry, they might have some understanding on what's going on, but it's not all professionals that the like they are monitoring what's new. You can share this information. So what actually you're paying them back, it's this first pleasure to talk uh, and to help someone and then to receive this information, uh, the most recent information in research. Um, I'm checking in the chat box, circle of... <laughs> Yeah, um, so some other benefits also from networking. Um, of course, you can learn from some trends as well, what's going on on the industrial part. And once again, even if after, finally, you will say in academia, the nowadays reality is that even for a very academic career, you need to collaborate with industry. So you can learn some trends, you know, get some ideas, also to prepare your academic projects as well, to know what could be interesting. Then, of course, well, once again, we've been discussing about this receiving advice, understanding what the job is about or a company is about, what the values are, very much important. Learning language. When you will go through a recruitment interview, speaking with your academic terms, it could be quite um, difficult to, to show that you're ready for switching, for transitioning um, to industry. With this networking discussions, you've learned all, already some terminologies, jargon, so you know, let's say, instead of saying, um, thesis or PhD thesis, you will talk, or postdoctoral research, you will talk about um, research project. You will know also, um, um, also um, let's say, uh, talk about results to show once again that this, you know the importance of notions. Um, I see the question from Patrick, um, unsolicited emails. Absolutely. Once again, networking is about expanding. If you will network just with people you already know, you will not surely receive new information. So it's even a very common thing to send a LinkedIn invitation or an email. If you have an email from the your potential interlocutor saying like the structure of this email will be close to the um, um, to pitch. So like what exactly to put in this unsolicited email, I will answer later. But it's a very common practice. Of course, if you see uh, an interesting professional on um, LinkedIn or elsewhere, you can send an invitation and launch a conversation. That's why personal references. So you're meeting new people um, who will also learn about you as professional. So you're actually making yourself visible for decision makers. 
And while networking, what will be important is, of course, um, to help your interlocutors um, and to help them understand you. So you really need to, um, you need help your interlocutors figure out quickly how they can help you. Um, otherwise, if your interlocutors, they really don't, well, they might know a few things about you, um, your story, but well, they don't know exactly your background. They don't want, they don't know where you want to go. Uh, of course, well, it will be difficult for them to, to help. Um, another criteria of why you should prepare your communication is, of course, what you mentioned before, is time. So, um, of course, your interlocutor's time is quite limited. That's why your perfect pitch should be not exceeded two minutes. So, you can really quickly return the floor to the person you uh, you came to meet. That's why you need to select message and adjust your presentation to your interlocutor uh, who won't necessarily be a specialist in your field. Um, Agnes, about your question, um, there's well, your access platform when you can find, of course, the um, different programs, the ABG as well. So since it's not directly about pitching, uh, I will answer more into details um, your question uh, at the end if we have time. Um, so final pitch. Um, this is actually the presentation that you would make at the beginning of networking discussion. So you arrange anything. Um, the person has invited you for this discussion. And then, well, this, you need to introduce yourself quickly. So of course, every pitch should be unique and each time adapted to your interlocutor into the context where you are, whether it's a career fair or networking discussion but the structure will stay pretty standard. So it's three main elements, introduction, introduction development, conclusion. Um, so in the first part, you talk about you, who I am, your name, very important, your history. So this part actually should capture the attention of your interlocutor. So it's something human about yourself, about your personality. Um, you need to show it sort of red line in your career path. So if you, um, um, let's say an example, um, you have a PhD in acoustics, and you're willing to work for a startup um, promoting different uh, sound uh, music instruments. So you can start something with saying that I've been always passionate about music and different um, uh, devices to really subliminate the music. That's why I've been... Uh, working uh, on my project in acoustics and then da, 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 da. so something that will show also the part of your personality and the development part the larger part so here we talk about one minute you talk what i did so your experiences and of course your relevant research research achievements and by research achievements, I mean, of course, outside of pure research results, but it could be new collaborations, um, papers, um, some awards. So not exactly what you have found in your fundings, research fundings. So of course, if you're mostly in your senior position, or even if you're um, doing your postdoc, it will be difficult to really fit all of your experience and all of your achievements 
into one minute. So you need to make choices. Really think what could be interesting for your interlocutor. And ideally, you need to avoid jargon. Then you need also uh, the conclusion, say what I want to do. So you talk about your goals, your plans. Um, is it, well, why are you actually communicating with your interlocutor? Is it because you're looking for a job in a specific sector? So you would love to know more about the company or sector, or you're looking for creating a startup and you're looking for business angels, investors. So of course, depending on the goal, your conclusion will be um, different, but even if it's this part is quite quick, um, so you just summarize your goals and then you, um, you ensure, um, you explain also what you're expecting from uh, your interlocutor. So could be something very less sentence saying like, um, I know that you've been working in different um, um, companies as an R&D manager. I was wondering what this position um, is about. Or uh, now I'm trying, so I've been doing this and that, and now I'm trying to figure out um, how to switch uh, to industry. So um, can you give me some advice of how to prepare my job application? So once again, according to the context and your goals, the conclusion will be different. Um, and once again, we're talking about two minutes. Two minutes, 10 seconds less, 10 seconds more, but no longer. Otherwise, you there's a, a risk that you will lost your interlocutor's interest. Um, I will show you some examples. So I'm not sure if I shared this down. So I will reshare my screen. Okay, yeah. So we'll show you some examples of pitching. Um, it's not seniors one. So the, the person, uh, um, PhD candidates, doesn't matter about seniority. So two different examples, try to understand, well, listen to these examples and also notice what skills the person has mentioned, uh, what, um, what are career goals of this particular researcher, and then will give me a quick feedback. What do you think about this speech? Um, did you understand everything? Was it pleasant to listen or not? So the first example is from Arita. So if you're ready, I will start the video. So once again, make some quick notes about what you do you think about this pitch. So yeah, I hope the, um, the sound will be fine. Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Harita. Uh, I'm part of an interdisciplinary team of uh, biologists and physicists um, at the Physics for Medicine Laboratory. Uh, we study uh, how painful and non-painful sensations are encoded in the brain. For example, when you have sorry a soothing effect with warm tea, the same tea can be very painful or uncomfortable if the temperature is a bit higher. Um, our brain handles these kind of situations on a day-to-day -day basis, basically every passing moment. Uh, and I study how these situations change uh, the brain networks. And I study this using a technology called functional ultrasound. Uh, when I did my master's in biomedical engineering, I started developing an interest in neuroscience. And I was told that it will be very difficult for me to um, switch to neuroscience because I was a biomedical engineer. Um, but I did not give up. Um, I, I was very motivated to find a position 
uh, to learn something in neuroscience. And I found um, a position as a research associate in an Alzheimer's research lab in Mayo Clinic. Um, from there, I applied to this PhD program in after Paris uh, in this PCI um, and started working in this project. Um, numerous times I've been told that engineers can't do what biologists can do and vice versa. And um, I wanted to kind of break that stereotype a little bit and to, to be able to do a little bit of both. Um, and after rigorous training and a lot of um, putting in a lot of time and effort, uh, I can now handle uh, a surgical blade and an electronic circuit with almost the same uh, level of ease. Um, so at this point of my PhD, I have demonstrated and I've studied how brain networks change with respect to one's experiences. And I choose translational clinical neuroscience as a career path because I have trained myself to look at the bigger picture and also um, look at the technical um, implication and also the biological implications at the same time. Um, so I, I sort of think that I'm ready to, to face that challenge now. Thank you for listening to me. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Thanks. So this is the first example from Harita. What do you think? Did you understood, understand what her career goal is? Uh, what, your, what her main skills are? What do you think? Yes, Elena. Um, as I understand, Harita uh, talk a lot about your um, skills, about your project, but not enough about her career uh, goals because she talk. If you have some questions, you can ask me. But I don't understand. To be honest, what is your main uh, goal in this pitching? Just introduce your uh, project. It was uh, nice, but what? Uh, other action should be done. I can't understand. Okay. And did you did you notice some of her skills? You mentioned that she she speaks a lot a lot about her skills. Could you give some examples of her skills? Uh, she um, takes research in the field of neuroscience, um, neuroscience, and uh, she. Mm, to be honest, I can't remember all. <laughs> but she talked a lot about technical uh, things in her research work, about um, um, brain networks, how, how uh, she researched these networks, in which methods. But mm -hmm. to be honest, um, I can't fix uh, a lot on this method because it was too much information for me. Mm -hmm. So she talked a lot of uh, her scientific field project, of course, we can hear scientific skills based on her pitch. Um, did anyone uh, not notice her soft skills? She mentioned something. Thank you, Elena. So maybe a, a comment from my side. First of yeah, all, by that. coming from her field, I realized like she was trying to describe her skills in the most simple way as possible. And she didn't even describe any of her technical skills. Actually, what she said was extremely generic. And so it's actually funny to realize that someone uh, perceived that as this was too complicated because from my side, it was so oversimplified. It's uh, true that she, that she paid really attention to jargon. There's really was yeah. zero, almost zero jargon. Zero, yes. Uh, so on the other hand, what I actually caught my attention was the way she, she kind of demonstrated a skill rather than say that she had it. That was that she wanted to transition from one field to another. And so she described all the steps that she did. And now she reacted to people saying, hey, this is too hard for you. And it's like, no, I will, I will manage. So it, it, how she took the challenge and kind of overcome it. Um, there, I must say, I kind of got distracted taking some notes about myself. So I will not comment on the actual skills. Uh, so. Thank you. 
skills that she described it afterwards. But you're absolutely right that uh, she didn't list her skills. She didn't say like, my main skills are, my technical skills are, my soft skills are. She gave an example and through the, uh, the example, she shared that she uh, someone is very uh, perseverant person, um, motivated, rigorous. Thank you, Daniela. Um, did anyone uh, heard about her career goal? There's something in the chat box. Okay, the Ali, the comment from Kelly. Ali, she wants to work in narrative translational research. She has a good experience in physical and biology, biological setting. Um, she gave an example of handling an electronic circuit and surgical blade with similar ease here. Yeah. And also the comment from Sandra, um, nice self-presentation. And she talked to an audience of experts in her field. Um, it's, Actually, the audience wasn't experts, so it was people from R and D uh, in different fields and also companies. So it was um, a contest, one of the uh, contests uh, were organized at ABG. So on the other side, it was a jury. So it's not very a hundred percent natural pitch, but um, she was talking about her uh, career path. But saying like, well, um, she uh, sees herself uh, in chemical neuroscience, and then she also developed why. Um, and um, it's absolutely fine, fine not to, you know, like give uh, a lot of details about your career path, especially when you're in the very beginning of development of your career plan. So you have some ideas of what you want to do and then you're open to conversation. So in pitch, it's also fine, like quick, quickly mention what you want to do. And then of course, to say that you're open to some other suggestions. Um, let's also see the second example from Olivia. So this one was mainly on the um, scientific part of career plan. Um, and then uh, Olivia's will talk mostly uh, like more industrial oriented. So the same try to make some notes. All right. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me fine? Okay, great. So my name's Olivia Cool. I'm from New York and I'm finishing my PhD right now on the border of organic and polymer chemistry. I've always loved science and fashion, so I hope my career can be at the border of these two things in the cosmetics industry. When I found this project at uh, Up to Paris designing mo new materials, it seemed like the perfect fit for this goal. So in Brooklyn, I worked as an adjunct professor and I had so much fun teaching in a really international setting. And my goal was really to make chemistry accessible to everybody. At the same time, I got to keep my hands dirty in the lab, working uh, as a teacher in the lab, but also as a research assistant. And I also was working in digital marketing, something I really enjoyed and have continued to document my PhD project on an Instagram account. So my current research is in designing new recyclable materials called vitromers. These materials use dynamic bonds between polymer chains to give the strength of thermosets, but also the recyclability of thermoplastics. So my piece of this project is to put a new chemistry into the materials that hasn't been used before. So with all synthetic research, there's inevitably some problems faced. Sometimes it's really difficult to get the materials that you're trying to study and you have to look at new protocols and simplify methods. Um, and the pace of the research can demand some patience. 
but I've really learned throughout this PhD to be resilient and keep a good attitude to keep moving forward every day. So my career goal is to find a position between research science and communications. I really want to be a lab rat and a social butterfly at the same time. So in the short term, I'd like to find a position um, getting some bench experience in formulating cosmetics. And then in the future, I'd like to find something that's more of a liaison between the research team and the marketing department. So thank you so much for listening and I'm excited to have a conversation with you about this. All right, what do you think about Olivia's pitch? Some reactions? Well, I think this was a... Oh, uh, maybe sorry. first Said and then Tanina. Please Said. Yeah, well, I think Olivier has done well in integrating herself and her skills and her goals. Uh, it's very important that she has managed to show her skills and her, um, I mean, um, career path. And this is very important because uh, sometimes we um, manage to introduce ourselves, but we don't, uh, I mean, give a career. Uh, uh, I mean, path of our, um, you know, uh, I mean, a career, uh, a clear path of our career, for example. So this is very important. I uh, think uh, if I was uh, a recruiter, uh, I would not ask more about this, but I would ask uh, more about what, uh, what she is going to do for my specific problems. Thank you. Thank you, Said. So you mean that she managed to balance her, uh, to talk about herself, about her personality, and also about her project? Uh, right. Yes, right. I think this this was very clear. Okay. Thank you. Tanino? Uh, so my comment is, again, as also someone wrote in the chat, that she clearly mentioned the skills that she have in a much more explicit way than before. Uh, I noticed that she mentioned three different times what her goal was. She formulated that in slightly different ways. Uh, I'm actually curious about your opinion about that, if this is reinforcing or it's actually just repeating the same thing. Um, I also noticed that at some point, I'm curious what the audience is. Because at some point she said something with a lot of specific chemical jargon, and there was no need for that in front of an uneducated audience. You can just say this material is resistant and recyclable, as easy as that. On the other hand, that was a very easy sentence to show competence if the audience understand what you're saying. So really, depending on the audience, I would be very pro this, like, wow, in one sentence, you actually showed a lot or um, confused. And I also notice how she formulated the career goals that are awesome because she showed what is her short-term plan, long-term plan. Like this position will fit me now for this reason, but later on, I wanna transition and go there. And then she asked to kind of negotiate about that. That was very good. Yeah, thank you for your comment. Um, just quick replies. So of course, um, I think the first time she mentions about her uh, goal, it's, well, it's just to settle the uh, the sector, cosmetic industry, and then also she explains why. So it's fine because it's like there's different kind of information. It's just what and then why. So of course you can complement and add something. It it will not appear like repeating the same information. And of course, when she specified short long terms, so it's once again showing that she quite advanced in her career planning. So she's been thinking about these elements as well. Wow. Elena? Um, uh, as for me, it was really nice speech, and I absolutely agree with previous comments. 
uh, I noticed that she gave a really nice uh, connection between her uh, career goal. She said that she would like to work uh, at the intersection of research and communication. And before that, she said that during her PhD project, she documented this project in her social networks in Instagram. It's really nice um, connection because she shows her previous practical skills in her future roles. So it was a argu argumented, uh, argumented pitch. Yes, and this is ideally what you also need to um, to have in your pitch, because while talking about your personality in, and skills, once again, it won't be enough just to say, I'm this kind of person and I have this list of skills. It won't be very much convincing, but when you are able to give even some quick examples showing your personality and skills, it will be very Perfect. So if you're a social person, of course, uh, if you say that you're a social person, you also need to um, help with this with your body language as well. And in Olivia's example, she really provides a really open posture, also saying with nonverbal communication and confirming what is about what she's about to say. Um, some other comments. Olivia. Um, so to highlight, well, I think you already make your own list of efficient communication. Um, of course, you first, what you need to think about is to choose your words carefully. So no jargon. You saw about this. Oh yeah, um, about the. Uh, this jargon so in technical um use of some um terminology that tino uh, tanino sorry uh what you asked if there's really no option if sometimes you need to use some terms you can of course mention something more specific and then in this case you need to explain this what it stands for so of course you can like try to find some uh, middle way between going too technical and going too vulgarized. So that's why you need, of course, to use vocabulary known to your interlocutor. In the living case, once again, it was a professional jury, so people working in the industry, so not specifically um, in her field, but still they, they knew some terms, so it wasn't that much shocking as if it was just me with my uh, social science background. You need also select the relevant information. Be just simple and professional. So know some beautiful vacuous sentences without providing any content, any meaning. So go straight to the point because it's still two minutes and uh, it might appear long, but actually it's just a no normal talk Ideally, be specific, provide examples, quantify your achievements. Once again, uh, you can mention the research project uh, budget, uh, the fact that you set up collaboration, maybe number of publications, um, number, number of students you supervised. And for this, really to be specific and to keep dynamic in your pitch, you need to use action verbs. I developed, I demonstrated, I set up, I planned, I collaborated, I organized, so and so on, depending on what you're trying to, to, uh, to describe. And don't be afraid thinking that, well, that's too much of me, too much of I. Um, and because it's your presentation. You're not talking about your research, you're talking about yourself and about storytelling. So if you already know storytelling, of course, it's already a storytelling, but storytelling is mostly to, um, to show your skills, especially soft skills, because when you will talk about your uh, hard skills, well, it's quite um, easy to justify that you know some techniques, 
easy. About soft skills, some personal qualities, it will be hard to justify just in one hour, two hours interview. So that's why it's true. You need to use storytelling, meaning that to explain, to showcase that you have some skills, soft skills, you need to give an example of a situation when you put this into the practice. So it's true that in pitch, very quickly in the development part, it's also the same uh, the same idea of storytelling. So you not just once a year, you don't list your skills, you provide a quick story. But well, in, uh, in the case of pitch, it should be really concise. And then if we're talking about recruitment interview, if the question, have you ever been in a difficult situation? or in conflict situation. Yes, I've been, but that won't be enough. Then you tell a story, uh, providing context, uh, what the problem was uh, and how you, um, what your concrete actions were and what results. Once again, you need to show results. Um, well, body language, of course, even if it's online, we still see like a part of your body, so pay attention and also um, um, be sure that well, everything is uh, is fine to provide you the, the, the right environment. So that's why now uh, I invite you, well, the, we're going to practice pitch. So I will ask you to prepare your own pitch, just a draft pitch of two minutes. Um, so I will give you 15 minutes for this, uh, to prepare this draft based on the structure with three elements I showed you, um, with the idea that you are going to pitch in front of professional working outside of academia in industry and who is not a specialist in your field. So we're not talking about a job. It's not a recruitment interview. We're just talking about networking. So you are pitching in front of professional with the idea to receive a, an advice for your career plan. So first you prepare your pitch and then I will split you into groups of three and then you will pitch in front of your colleagues. And I will be also navigating in your groups and checking the space. Um, all right, I think everyone is back. So before I will show you some final advice, let's uh, discuss this exercise. What do you think about it? Um, are you happy with your pitch? Uh, did you receive some valuable advice? Was it useful to pitch in front of people you just met? Yeah, not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad. Thank you, Natalia. <laughs> no, it was it was good. I, it's uh, actually quite nice to have some feedbacks on this because uh, most of the time uh, we are on our own minds, uh, thinking that it's never enough, it's never good enough. So it's good. And I agree that the ones I saw were quite good, very impressive. I mean. Thank you. Actually, for me, it was the first time to, to do a pitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this is uh, a, a very good experience. So thanks. Thank you, because, Ricardo. Uh, I need to work a lot on this. <laughs> It's true that uh, well, any communication, especially pitch, is about practicing. And what you also need about pitching is that there's no, never like a perfect pitch that you can create and practice for the last 20 years. Thanks. So each time you need, <laughs> yeah, each time you need to, to come up with something new, something fresh, uh, tailored to your interlocutor. That's why I showed you the structure, you know, it's like sort of bricks. And then each time you know, like what elements you need to put inside. And then each time you adapt to your interlocutor. And um, what you just said, Ricardo, that it was first time for you practicing pitch. 
Maybe it was first time practice, practicing the structured pitch, but I'm sure that in your daily life, all of us were yeah. practicing like elevator pitch or a presentation pitch in different contexts. It's just, we're not always paying attention like, oh, it's a pitch. It's just like knowing that it's a term for this kind of introduction. Yes, thank you. <laughs> what about others? I think for me, this project. How did you like? Yeah, I think for me, I, I kind of got some, some good feedback. At times you feel that you can say these things confidently until you get the feedback and you know yeah so but it was good that i i i was able to follow the structure but then i could see that i was going back and forth in between the structures i think that was what happened like okay from where i started to the middle to the last one at some point maybe because i'm trying to lay emphasis on certain things i try to go back again to talk about them which wasn't really good enough I think that was a very useful feedback for me and mm -hmm. something I should watch out for. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Patrick. Um, what I take, I've took some notice. So what I, in the pitches I heard, I noticed good ones. Um, not all pitches were uh, perfectly to industry. So there were some pitches uh, still for academia. So I suppose it's fine depending on your goals. But the structure, all of you managed to do so. Maybe some vocabulary you can also work on trying to it's advice to all of you, um, especially if you are about to transit to industry, try to avoid some very typical academic words, like saying PhD study, because even if you're just a PhD candidate right now, you're not doing study. PhD is your professional experience. So you're doing research, you're a researcher, you're not a student anymore. So speak about your PhD as a research project and yourself as a research engineer, researcher, but you're not as, um, a student anymore. And of course, dynamic, really to show your enthusiasm talking to someone. And um, I really loved that some of you tried to um, in your pitches, include any uh, interlocutor. Um, with um, there's some example with pandemic. Pandemic is something that each of us uh, has experienced. So really, um, if you mention like some of your main achievements during the pandemic, it's it will help also. Um, engage your interlocutor because for sure your interlocutor was doing something during the pandemic so we were discussing about this keen common so it could be uh in a it's a really nice idea to also uh, provide this experience um there's some also additional advice for debrief um well in pitches that I heard, all of you managed to pronounce well your name, so it's good. But um, in real life, sometimes maybe, uh, oh, I know there's a lot of people could forget to like to provide your name, so give your name. So really, uh, no speedy, take your time, pronounce quite uh, easily your name. Uh, if there's a need, try to also to use some facial, facial gymnastics, uh, really to be sure that uh, um, it will help you in your diction. Um, otherwise, of course, pitches is everything, but not an improvisation. It must seem like you're just improvising, but in fact, it's not the case. You prepared your pitch at least breaks. But so there's no improvisation, but in the same time, of course, you need to be prepared, but not too prepared. Because if you're really trying to um, rehearse too much of your pitch and repeat word by word, well, 
we can hear it. And also, if you're thinking that it's sort of a comedy, if you're overly theatrical, it's not that natural. Stay natural the way you speak normally and follow the structure. If you're feeling some stress, it's absolutely fine. It means actually that there's some passion in what you're saying and some emotion as well. It's never like, it, it could even appear suspicious if you would deliver a talk about yourself, you know, with a poker face, say like, hi, my name is, this is what I am doing and my goal is. No, it's not a very <laughs> engaging pitch. Um, also, of course, you need to adapt pitch to your interlocutor. And uh, the, the one tip that I really love to apply is that when you meet a new person and you have no clue of what the person um, is doing, what the background is, actually, you can ask, introduce themselves first. Oh, so you're also attending um, this event, can you tell me more about you? So your interlocutor will pitch first and then based on the this quick information you receive, you can of course adapt your pitch to the interlocutor and be more um, to the point. Uh, then uh, well, enthusiasm, dynamism, of course, to show um, if you are naturally speaking with your hands, why not? With gestures, it could help to show um, that you are a very enthusiastic person. But of course, the, this as anywhere, it could be like a golden rule that like you are not over gestulating, but it's uh, use some gestures to help you um, really um, to illustrate what you're talking about. Um, and of course, uh, if it's online discussion, well, usually try to check if there's some mic is working, if that your camera is working, because it's nice. Networking online is fine. It could be done by Zoom or any other platform, but under condition that we see each other. If suddenly your mic isn't functioning, well, try, of course, to have some backup. Unfortunately, well, there's, there's some of you uh, uh, in such situation that you weren't able to practice pitch. Um, well, maybe here it's just a training, so it's less uh, important to have your, your mic functioning. But if you uh, will participate in networking discussion or even in the recruitment interview, of course, you need to be sure that everything is perfect at least the picture and the sounding. Um, and to help you really exercise pitch, if you're quite shy person, well, it will be nice, of course, to film yourself, uh, to film your rehearsal, to also see whether you are managed to uh, sound fluently in what you're trying to, to say. I'm not talking about language, especially if you're speaking in a foreign language, but really if it makes sense of what you're saying. And if then you have friends, family, of course you uh, you practice, it's even better, you practice with a real audience. Um, it's also very much helpful to be sure to uh, refine your pitch as well. Yes, Danina. I, I just wanted to to comment on something you said about having a spare microphone because yeah. it had happened to me so many times and actually we all have a spare microphone it's called a smartphone and you just switch from one device to another it's usually very easy like there is always a solution that you need mm -hmm. uh, but maybe it doesn't come to someone's mind in that very moment and that's why I wanted to mention yeah, this is the problem. Sometimes, like, if something isn't functioning, we're naturally trying to start us. Um, uh, we're panicking because, like, oh, where is my phone? Where should I uh, click? So that's why you need to, of course, I would totally agree with your advice. You need to, um, um, to be sure that you have some backup 
tools nearby so you can of course use your smartphone and so on so i see that you're uh, sharing your linkedin accounts that's wonderful please continue doing so um i just have two more slides to show you um but before that do you have questions about this final advice or about this workshop in general No. So, um, of course, pitching, good communication um, is really vital in any type of careers. And then what I also see at ABG, as I told you, we have, so we're always in touch with recruiters. And there is some also even job offers when pitching or networking is asked as a skill. So this is, uh, I will show you just two quick examples. So first from um, French pharmaceutical group, Xavier. Um, so they're looking for a neurology expert. Um, for France, well, it doesn't matter what type, uh, where. Um, so of course, they're looking for someone with PhD or even a postdoctoral experience in the field with some, of course, scientific uh, publications. So some, some list also of technical knowledge. And then when it comes to soft skills, because for companies, for industries, they're always looking for soft skills. And actually this part of, um, of, your, of, your, of your skills, this is something that will help you in your transition. You see, for a scientific position, they're asking for someone with perfect communication and presentation skills, was written and oral, and then the specific languages, and demonstrates good network and relationship building skills. So that's why I really try to, in this workshop, to talk about what we talk about teaching. So one way, and with this idea that you will pitch in front of professionals to build your network, because it's always nowadays often asked by companies. In other examples from Danone, uh, well, this one for junior scientist, but also very technical position. Well, they are of course asking uh, for some PhD, scientific background um, in uh, food or uh, in um, anthropology. So you see, um, it's also um, a reminder to social sciences that even for like let's say technical companies, they are always also are looking for um, the social scientists, PhD holders as well. And you see, they are looking for someone who has abilities to exchange and collaborate with external experts. And we've been talking about storytelling. So how can you justify that you are able to exchange and collaborate? You provide a story when you network with um, your collaborators on some other professionals. They're also looking for team player, good networking skills and ability to enroll key stakeholders. So for the one part to provide that you are able to um, communicate, it will be sketch. Uh, it will be pitch and then also storytelling. So these two types of communication that you need to use in your daily professional life in multiple contexts. So this is all I wanted to share with you today. Um, do you have um, some last questions or feedbacks? Can you comment more on how to kind of demonstrate networking skills beside, I, I, I don't know, it's something difficult to describe for you. I think it's easily, it's more easily perceived in a conversation, but what about your CV or similar written devices? How do you quantify that? How many friends, how many connections I have on LinkedIn seems no, uh, absolutely not, not the right way to do that. But um, it's true that if we're talking about networking, so you mentioned networking, and then for all soft skills, you give a quick example, even on your written application on the CV. So number of connections doesn't 
mean a thing. But if you, uh, let's say, can provide um, some collaborations or that you set up some uh, events and this, well, we can tell that, of course, you've been collaborating with different people, with different stakeholders. So it's like first elements that you are good in networking. And then if a recruiter is really interested in this particular skill, um, he or she will ask, could you elaborate on this? Could you provide some example? And then you're using storytelling. But on the written application, just a very quick example or of a situation where you put into practice your networking skill well, in, in this example. Does it uh, answer your question? Yeah, it did. Thank you. Some other questions? I, I have a, a question in relation to the uh, work experience. Yeah, I don't know other people, but uh, I I don't have a uh, uh, great uh, uh, society behind me. Uh, my curriculum uh, is a very poor in society. I worked uh, for a small society and not for a big company. Uh, what? Uh, uh, when I write uh, my curriculum and spoke uh, in relation to this, uh, I, it's possible to uh, mention uh, IBM or uh, Apple or uh, Google or their society and company like this. How explain my skills? Uh, because uh, uh, it's uh, different to explain uh, how I achieve skills uh, in uh, Apple. Uh, and the other side, I achieve uh, some skills uh, in uh, uh, my countryside uh, company <laughs> or like that. Well, um, you need really to do not think that uh, if you will show application of your skill in a big company, that it will count more than uh, showing your skill uh, with some smallest companies. So on your CV or on your LinkedIn, when you talk about your professional experience, you're explaining your missions, exactly what you've been doing. And with this, you're showing your skills. If you need to identify, if you have some trouble to name skills, there's a lot of different platforms that could help you. Um, just send me an email, I will provide some, some, some examples. But so you attach, you show your skills within professional experience. So it won't be that important like to show that uh, you develop skills is while working with small companies or big companies. What will be important is that you've been able to use your skills in a professional context. You see what I mean, Ricardo? Yes, yes, thanks. Does it answer your question? Yes, yes. It's true that I could have talked about CV hours and hours. There's a, a lot of things to do and to say about. But well, unfortunately, or fortunately, today, so today uh, we're talking about a pitch. So, um, like put me uh, small reactions on Zoom. How do you feel about pitching and uh, uh, to in front of a person outside of academia, whether you feel confident, quite org, okay, nearly okay or not well. Some, you know, like on Zoom, you have some reactions. So we can, I can see visually, what do you think about today's workshop? Well, for me, it was very good. I, I mean, uh, this is now for give our opinions. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Of okay. course, you can just go uh, this way. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so uh, for me, it, it was very good. I started practicing actually with my friends, with my family, because they they are not uh, from the, the academia. So I try to use uh, um, simple words and uh, things that makes connections with uh, it depend depending on the backgrounds. Uh, so that's my strategy. 
And when I am in conferences, uh, scientific conferences, I try to use a more elevated, um, higher level of uh, in the conversation. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the, that's it. Well, thank you, Natalia, very much for your feedback. Um, I'm putting also my email the chat box so this way you can you know where to find me so um thank you very much for your participations for staying until the end um if you have more questions really do not hesitate to get in touch with me either via email or on linkedin and um well i'm i'm here also to to help you and uh, uh to assist as i can uh, in your career development. So thank you once again and uh, best of luck with your pitching. I hope you will practice and enjoy this communication. Thank you very much, Christina. It was wonderful today to meet all of us and to have your advice and uh, tips uh, about uh, preparing us uh, for pitching. And um, we stay in touch and we, uh, many of you already exchanged your uh, contacts. So uh, let's see uh, each other in the next webinar. Thank you, Christina. Thank you all. Goodbye.